Good morning and welcome to day two of five in our devotional from you version called Distracted by Lance Lang. We are definitely distracted in this world and in day one yesterday, we learned that the author sometimes goes for a run when he needs to hear from God. I spent the final 30 minutes of my run processing what God told me. Distraction leads to death. When I got home, I did my normal cool-down routine, stretched out, chugged a bottle of water, and hopped in the hot tub. Running is where I often get spiritual downloads, and the hot tub usually is where I try to process them out on paper so I don't forget. Obviously, not real paper, but the notes app on my phone. As soon as I began typing, I sensed emotions welling back up. Although I knew I had a lot to unpack just from the phrase, distraction leads to death, I immediately visualized the end result of this debilitating cycle, and it shook me. There's nothing that scares me more than the thought of losing my calling, not being able to live out the singular purpose God has given me on this earth terrifies me. God has been so good to give me chance after chance and open door after door, and here I was, a few choices away from allowing something as meaningless as a distraction to take it all away, to take me out, to push me forward, forfeit my future, to cancel my calling, to kill me. That's the moment when the full weight of desperation hit me. And when those desperation moments come, that's when you're ready for change. I know I was. Mm. I'll tell you more about what I did tomorrow, but in the meantime, what about you? What would your life look like if your purpose was stolen? What would happen if your calling was canceled. Are you in need of a change? Is the weight of this desperation heavy enough to push you to do something about it? Hmm. Let's look at the scriptures for some guidance. Judges 14, 1 through 19. Samson went down to Timnah and saw there a young Philistine woman. When he returned, he said to his father and mother, I have seen a Philistine woman in Timnah. Now get her for me as my wife. I'm a little demanding. His father and mother replied, Isn't there an acceptable woman among your relatives or among all our people? Must you go to the uncircumcised Philistines to get a wife? But Samson said to his father, Get her for me. She is the right one for me. His parents did not know that this was from the Lord, who was seeking an occasion to confront the Philistines, for at that time they were ruling over Israel. Samson went down to Timnah together with his father and mother. As they approached the vineyards of Timnah, suddenly a young lion came roaring toward him. The Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon him, so that he tore the lion apart with his bare hands, as he might have torn a young goat." But he never told his father nor his mother what he had done. Then he went down and talked with the woman, and he liked her. Some time later, when he walked, went back to marry her, he turned aside to look at the lion's carcass, and in it he saw a, scoop, a swarm of bees and some honey. He scooped out the honey with his hands and ate as he went along. When he rejoined his parents, he gave them some, and they too ate but he did not tell them that he had taken the honey from the lion's carcass. Now his father went down to see the woman, and there Samson held a feast, as was customary for young men. When the people saw him, they chose thirty men to be his companions. Let me tell you a riddle, Samson said to them, and if you can give me the answer within the seven days of the feast, I will give you thirty linen garments and thirty sets of clothes. If you can't tell me the answer... You must give me thirty linen garments and thirty sets of clothes. Tell us your riddle, they said. Let's hear it. He replied, Out of the eater, something to eat. Out of the strong, something sweet. For three days they could not give the answer. On the fourth day they said to Samson's wife, Coax your husband into explaining the riddle for us, or we will burn you and your father's household to death. Did you invite us here to steal our property? Then Samson's wife threw herself on him, sobbing. You hate me. You don't really love me. You've given my people a riddle, but you haven't told me the answer. I haven't explained it to my father or mother, he said. So why should I explain it to you? 
She cried the whole seven days of the feast. So on the seventh day, he finally told her, because she continued to press him. She, in turn, explained the riddle to her people. Before sunset on the seventh day, the men of the town said to him, What is sweeter than honey? What is stronger than a lion? Samson said to them, If you had not plowed with my heifer, you would not have solved my riddle. No. <laughs> then the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon him. He went down to Ascalon, struck down thirty of their men, stripped them of everything, they, and they gave their clothes to those who had explained the riddle. Burning with anger, he returned to his father's home, and Samson's wife was given to one of his companions, who had attended him at the feast. Oh. So, what, his best man took him. Took her, huh? Uh, Colossians 1, 9 through 23. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience, and giving jo joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy place in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption and the forgiveness of sins. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. All things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him are all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior, but now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight, without blemish and free from accusation, if you continue in your faith. Establish and firm and do not move from the hope held out in the gospel. This is the gospel that you heard and that has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven, and of which I, Paul, have become a servant. Mm. Okay. Don't be distracted. So, the people were distracted by his riddle? Or, there's some deep concepts here about this distraction stuff. Yeah, well, he, he was distracted by her constant whining. Yes, yeah, she was... Yeah, pulled him away from his purpose. He finally gave in. He finally gave in. So what was that scripture he said? You you plowed with my heifer? Yeah. That means he, they used his wife? Yeah. To get the answer? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Crazy, yeah. crazy. He, he knew right away because that's the only person he told. Yeah, okay, yeah. But so he called he her was, his heifer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so And in his anger, what did he do? He killed 30 men. Yeah. You know. Mm. Distraction leads to death. Yep. Day two of five. We'll have more of this story from Lance Lang tomorrow. Let me pray this one. Okay. Lord, Heavenly Father, give us the ears to hear and the eyes to see what you want us to see, Lord. Mm. And to block out the distractions as much as possible. Help us to return from the distraction back to our focus as quickly as possible if it does happen. Because mm. we know it does, Lord. And we need your strength. We need your help, your focus. Lord, thank you for the focus of the scriptures each morning as we go over these devotionals. Thank you to our listeners, Lord. And thank you for, of course, your listening and for your response, Lord. We know that you're listening and we know that you love us and you care for us. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you so much for this fact that we can have this direct communication with you in jesus name we pray amen, amen.